Hi, my name is Father Dimitri. I know I haven't been on for a while. I've had a pretty hectic couple weeks, and I'm here back with you today. Um, I was thinking about today about the that show uh, Deal or No Deal, where that has the 26 cases and it, the money ranges from one to a million dollars, and you have to choose which case that you want to pick and everything like that. And all of that really, you know, runs down to a game of chance. What case we pick, and if we get the highest one, we hope that we get the lowest ones, etc., etc. I'm not going to go through the whole game with you. But um, I was thinking about that today. And I've been, as I've been going through a lot of the social media and everything like that, and reading some of the things that some of the people that I'm friends with, not everybody's a Christian, I realize that, but I'm still friends with some some of those people, and they, some of the people are very verbal about what they believe and what they don't believe. Some people are verbal about not believing in God. I want to delete some of those people, but I'm friends with them, and plus I'm interested in knowing what they're thinking. It doesn't change how I feel, but it hurts my heart. It does definitely hurt my heart. I was thinking about this one time when I was a hospice chaplain and I went in and I encountered this man who was, he was a Catholic guy and I walked into the room and as soon as I walked into the room, his, the first words he said to me was, I hate God. I said, that's okay. I said, I understand. I said, that's okay that you hate God but you still have some sort of relationship with him. Everybody has a relationship with God, whether they don't believe in him or whether they hate him or they love him. Everybody has some sort of relationship with him. Non-existence of relationship is still a relationship. So during the course of the time, we were talking, and I didn't go in there specifically because I was working as a chaplain. I didn't go in to try to change his mind or to convert with him, convert him to Catholicism or to Orthodoxy or anything like that. I didn't try to make him believe what he didn't believe. I just went in there and I sat with him and I spent time with him. But one day we were talking and as we were con communicating with each other, I asked him, I said, what if? I said, what, what if you're right? I said, if you're right, God doesn't exist and God doesn't is not out there. He doesn't hear what we have to say. He doesn't care about us. If he doesn't exist at all, we have really nothing to look forward to. But I said, what if it, it is true? What if what he is telling us, what if the promises are true? I would rather go to my grave. And he was facing the end of his life. He was in hospice. Who knew? Nobody knew how long he had left to live. But I asked him, I said, you will at some point here in the next month, maybe two months, maybe less, you're going to be drawing your last breath. What if I'm right? What if what I'm telling you is the correct path. Is it a deal? Is it something that you want to accept? Or is it no deal? Is there something that is breaking the deal for you? Well, as we were talking about it, and we discussed these things, he began to open his eyes a little bit more. He started remembering all the good things that had happened in his life. And he started calling back to his mind all the things that he had learned. At one point, somebody had heard him, uh, somebody at the church had heard him, and he had turned against God. You know, what the usual thing that most people do is they turn against God when somebody hurts them deeply. And as he started progressing towards the end of his life, especially towards the last few weeks that I got to know him, he began to open his eyes to about what was going on. I realized that my life could end at any day. I realized that my life is not my own and that my life is something that I that belongs to God. And as I start walking closer and closer to God, I, I begin to hear all these things about people not believing in Him and trying to convince me and everybody else that He doesn't exist. But for me, it's not a deal breaker all the inconsistencies, all the things that I have heard that people try to explain to me, because 
of what the Holy Spirit has done in my life, because of what the Holy Spirit has done moving my heart and making me a more holy person, and I'm far from holy by any means, but making me a more holy person, making me a more righteous person, trying to make me into somebody that's better than I was yesterday. Am I holy? Am I righteous? I'm far from it, but I try. I try very hard to be the best man that I can be. I try very hard to live my life according to what I believe is the right way to live, to love, to love, to love. And I try very hard to continue to love, to forgive, to have mercy, to have grace. And I try to extend as much grace and mercy and love to people in my life, whether they believe, whether they don't believe, as God does for me. I hope that this will strengthen you. I hope this will give you at least something to think about. I hope that God's grace will shine on you and that God's blessings will be upon you. Whether you believe or don't believe, I pray that you at least take the time to think about what I've said, and I hope that you're going to be blessed today, and I hope that you're strengthened. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean out on your understanding. May the Lord bless you and protect you always. Bye-bye.